Hello everyone, my name is Braxton Miller. I go by at ill underscore mill on Instagram and this is the Leica S3 studio and short term review. So first, I think I'd like to start about talking about the camera here a little bit. The S3 for me has been a fantastic camera. I've loved this system since the 007. I've used the 007 a lot um, for a lot of different things and a lot of different projects. Um, I really primarily use this S system for portraiture. So this is kind of really why I wanted to be able to give a behind the scenes look with some of this video that I'm gonna show you um, of this camera in action, some of the uh, finals uh, of images that you can get with this camera and then kind of just uh, go over this camera as a whole, um, reviewing its usability as a daily, some of the photos I've gotten of it as a daily with my uh, short stint with it. I've tried to use, as, use this as much as I possibly can. Essentially with this camera, one of the biggest things that I wanted from Leica for this system really was just for a newer edition 007 essentially. Um, the autofocus in this camera is better, uh, which is a not a super big gripe of mine about the 007. Um, I manually focus this camera a lot just because the big optical viewfinder makes focusing easy. But in a pinch, sometimes uh, manual focus isn't optimal. Uh, autofocus sometimes is needed. Um, when I've noticed when a subject's far away, um, I'm using the 100, um, I can have a little bit of an issue sometimes getting like exact focus and the S3 does a great job of just nailing focus. The, the 007 did a good job, but this is slightly quicker um, and more responsive, which is uh, really all that I wanted. And then as far as um, transitioning from the 007 to the S3, I'd say that there's not really a learning curve. Um, of course, it's always important to learn a new sensor. I think that, um, you know, when getting into any camera that has a different sensor than what you're used to, there's gonna be times um, where there's a little bit of a learning curve. You know, you gotta figure out how it handles certain light, how it does uh, with studio lights, how it does with this, and how you generally light. Maybe you have to tweak the way you light, or maybe you have to underexpose, overexpose, you know. There's a plethora of things that you kind of have to dive into when you're learning a new sensor. And I think that that's a, of course, big piece is why I wanted to shoot this as much as I could, just so that I could get the saddle time, learn it, um, you know, know what I want from it. But one thing that I've really noticed a difference between the two is the color. Um, and I know that, of course, color science gets thrown around. Um, you know, everyone's kind of doing the blind tests. Um, and there's plenty of times where certain colors and certain shots will look good or bad, um, and it might not even be the kind that you think you like. Um, so uh, when I'm referring to color, I generally just mean consistency across the scale. Um, knowing what I'm gonna get. Um, with the 007, there would be times where it really wouldn't create the exact scene that I saw color-wise, and that was, uh, you know, there's plenty of things that can go into that um, as far as the white balance. Um, I just felt it wasn't though as solid of a color camera as I wanted it to be, so I did end up shooting a lot of black and white with the, 00, with the 007, but I have been shooting a lot of color with the S3, which has been awesome because I've always kind of wanted to be able to have that gear if I want it. I shoot a lot of black and white, but having the ability to have color is super, super important to me, um, and that's why I've been really digging this camera digging portraiture with it because skin tones are fabulous. Um, so I mentioned this in my unboxing video, but the reason for me, I believe that the colors are what they are. Um, Leica has redesigned their color filter array um, to broaden the red channel um, and skin tones generally fall under the red channel. So um, with this, it's displaying a little bit more of the natural tones of skin colors. And I think that that's really where you can see the biggest difference. And then I think with the 
wider gamut that it can um, see and interpret, I think that that just helps, again, across the board, not just skin tones, um, but I have noticed a really big difference in skin tones, which has been awesome, because I primarily, again, use this for portraiture. Um, it's my favorite system to be able to um, work with in that realm because I love the 100 F2. Um, it's a fantastic lens, it's super sharp. Um, you can stop down to F2 and the, because it's medium format, it's a little bit below um, an F2 as far as its depth of field. And that's obviously fantastic for portraiture. I think that this system just goes hand in hand with that. But my intro is getting a little long winded. Primarily I wanna show you the video and then sample images and talk about the sample images. Um, so we will cut to the footage that Court got of me and Ari in the studio. So now that we've kind of talked about some of the positives um, and gotten to see some behind the scenes, I wanted to talk more about um, this camera as a whole as how I use it, um, what I think it can do really well, uh, where some, and also where sometimes maybe it can falter. Um, it's all, for me, I like having my uh, M10 monochrome on me when I shoot with this kind of stuff most of the time, just so then I have the ability to whip off a shot quick if I want it. Um, so that kind of brings me to my first point. This camera for sure can sometimes end up being a little bit slow as far as pacing. Uh, sometimes I've gotten caught where I have to manually focus, um, have to set up stuff a little bit more. Um, and to some people that can be a big drawback. I know that a lot of people like to be able to be quick, fast moving, um, keep up the pace. Um, and some people like to slow down. So uh, I think that that's a big important piece to note about this camera and this system just in general. It is a little bit, take your time, focus, make sure everything's in focus, um, having your light set up, uh, all, all everything needs to be set up prior to the shot versus a little bit more run and gun. Has the ability of course to be run and gun. I think that um, with certain lenses, when you go a little bit wider, um, you don't have to nail focus as hard as some of the more telephoto stuff. That being said too, with the S3, the focus is much better. The autofocus is much better. So uh, you can, you can for sure make it happen. It's just not as easy. Um, I think that's a big piece to mention. However, for me, I like that type of workflow, um, especially when I'm using this, I will be um, slowing down, getting more traditional style portraits. Um, and then with my M10 monochrome, will be just a little bit more impromptu. Um, if I notice a moment in between something or I'm um, uh, wanting to work a little bit quicker, the M10 monochrome does fill that void for me. So uh, this that's why they fit together well. Um, sometimes with this, of course, you'll get stuck, like I said before, wishing it was a little bit snappier. Um, I have also noticed that when I'm outside of the studio, I like to kind of do a little bit more of snapshot style photography for my just day to day. And this kind of takes away from the ability for snapshot, unless, like I said, unless it's wide. Um, but for the most part, you know, you're kind of slowing down framing the way you want to. Instead of with the M10, I feel like sometimes, you know, just pick it up, 
quick focus, boom, done. Another really big piece that I enjoy now um, is tethering. Uh, tethering with this camera is fantastic. Uh, getting to see the DNG file straight out of the gate is way, way better than the back of this screen. Sometimes for me, the back of the S3 screen can be a little bit more misleading as far as colors, um, exactly how the light is rendering. Um, but when I pull into, uh, I'll tether to Lightroom and Lightroom generally will be able to give me a, as always with any camera though, um, a better representation of what the shot was and what I'll have to edit from. Um, but I do really like that I'm able to quickly tether. Um, file transfer is great. The cord that comes with it is uh, fast and stable. Haven't really had any issues with it, which has been fantastic. So I think that's a pretty good overview as far as portraiture goes for the S3. Um, if you have any questions on this guy, uh, just feel free to drop a comment. Um, I can get back to you whenever. Sometimes I miss some stuff um, or if there's a spec that you're interested in or just anything, drop a comment. Uh, I'm happy to get back with you. So what we'll do next is I'll look at some portraiture that I've gotten with this camera. Um, and then after that, we'll reconvene once more um, and then talk about this as a daily carry. Um, and then show some sample images that I got of using it as a daily carry. So if you hang tight with me, we'll get to some sample images after these sample images that I'm gonna show you next. Feel free to hang out and watch as long as you want. I will drop time codes so you can just skip to both sample images if you want. And now let's get to some portrait sample images. All right, so now that we've gotten to kind of talk about this camera as a portraiture camera, um, I think this camera is very well versed, so it can really be whatever you want it to be. I think it's just how it fits into a workflow. Uh, if you enjoy the camera, uh, because there can be plenty of workflows that may or may not work, but if it's the camera you really, really, really want, um, I think that all of that kind of stuff always overrides um, how you may feel about it. So really to kind of come to this camera, a few of the features that I just love. Um, it's fully weather sealed. I don't plan on, you know, going on some big trek somewhere in the mountains, but it's awesome to know that if maybe I did, I'd have a camera robust and weather sealed enough to be able to handle that. Um, you know, you see, I've seen a few images on social media of, people putting these in snow and you know all that kind of stuff and the mud and um, you know they hold up through all of that kind of stuff so I think that's a really big fun piece 
um, for this is, you know, with the M's, they're not weather sealed, and I don't really want to take it to the desert and mess it up. Um, and another big piece um, that I really enjoy, um, and I enjoy that uh, Leica has kept this in a lot of their cameras, is the optical viewfinder. Um, I'm a really big fan of being able to see the, through the lens or, again, with the M, through the rangefinder patch. Um, I think for me, with digital, it still retains some of that magic of not seeing the exact shot through an EVF. Um, EVFs, I think, for me, are the best when I know I have to get a shot if it's for a job. Um, the Q2 is nice because then I know what I'm locking in, I know how the light's hitting, I know I've hit exposure. Um, so I think that when you have to get results, an EVF makes the most sense. One thing that I don't love about the lenses though is the size. I do understand that there's a piece of that that has to just be that way because you're dealing with a medium format sensor and glass size and all of the intricate pieces, you know, they have to be bigger. So I understand that. And they're also all weather sealed. Um, so I do understand why they have to be bigger, but um, it would be nice if there was uh, a more across the line, even if they were a little bit, as far as a, if they were F stop down, because um, a lot of these are on 2.5 F, uh, you know, and even if there was a few that were four, but they were smaller, I probably actually would rather have those. Uh, because I would be shooting this in daylight anyway if I was taking it around with a smaller lens like that. But, um, you know, beggars can't be choosers. I love I love these lenses. The 70, which I don't, 70 comes back to about a 50 uh, as far as the equivalent on this sensor. And I don't actually even really shoot with a 50. Um, but because of its size, uh, I do generally choose this lens if I'm just taking it with me, um, just because it keeps it compact, small, and I think plays into a lot of strengths of this camera anyway. When I'm daylighting this, I generally will focus on more light, color, um, composition, and things like that. So it, it does lend itself to that anyway, because it, those things generally take a little bit time to set up finding the right angle finding the right light um, finding the right colors so i do think that its style and how i shoot it fits it being bigger and it's okay that it's bigger with the m's like i've said uh, earlier in this video i'm generally just kind of rapid fire trying to catch shots trying to catch moments uh, moments with my family or moments uh in the street um, and with this uh, i'm kind of slowing down looking at what's around me, finding shots versus trying to keep up with shots. So I think again, talking a little bit of how it works for me as a daily, I think that um, I generally don't just bring this uh, when I'm bringing it out. I will uh, have this, the S3 with a 70, um, the 72.5, and um, generally have my uh, monochrome with my 35. So then I have a 50 and a 35 kind of together, and those work, those focal lengths, I feel like they work in tandem pretty well. Um, and kind of, you kind of keep a similar mental mindset when creating with both of those. So then I have my lightweight and my, you know, heavier duty, big bad image maker uh, type camera with me, so then I can do both. I do find that uh, when I start getting the S3 out, I'll kind of keep the S3 out though and do a little bit more walking, find more shots. Again, I think that places where light is abundant, interesting textures are abundant, um, you can really kind of dive in with this camera setup. I think I would probably recommend this camera to people who do a lot of portraiture or people that do a lot of landscape. Um, you know, if you're looking for the quick, the fast, it's probably not in the realm that you want it to be. Um, or it could be kind of one of those where if you want to do street, um, you could do more street portraiture. And again, it isn't too big that, you know, you'd be running into issues uh, if you were, you know, say having it out in Chicago, walking around with it. Um, I don't think it would be too bad. And I do recognize it's medium format competitors, of course. I, I do think that, you know, some people are, are gonna like Hasselblad colors better or, you know, the X1D because it's smaller. So I think that also it takes someone that likes to like a glass, likes to like a look also with all of those factors combined um, to really enjoy this camera. So again, as all Leica products, it is niche. 
Um, and I think that for me, it really, because I love the way Leica lenses render, um, it is a portraiture system for me uh, and would be, if I did more landscape, would be a landscape system for me. Um, and now with its, again, tweaked colors, uh, I think it does a fantastic job at what it is. So all in all, this camera is fantastic. It's robust, uh, it has the ability to really be whatever you want it to be with the tweakings of the color channels. It's some of the best digital color that I've personally seen. The S system will always have a special place in my heart. I've, I've done a lot of work on these. Um, I'm shooting my most recent project, uh, Friend of a Friend, uh, and that's on my site if you wanna see any more about it or on my Instagram. Um, but I've done a lot of work on this system. Uh, it's really grown on me. I've really uh, began to learn the ins and outs of it fully. Um, and would say this is for sure my go-to for anything that I feel like is important. So all that being said, we can get into the images made that are outside the realm of portraiture, more into the landscapey, uh, daily carry style stuff. Uh, you can see those. Um, and then we will wrap up this video and I will check in once more with you guys to wrap up this video after these sample images have played for you guys. So that wraps up this video. I wanted to say thank you if you've stayed tuned in until now. Um, I've been extremely thankful for uh, all the positivity and uh, all of the new subscribers that have been coming in. Um, it's been very interesting to have a little bit of a learning curve to this platform just because I'm not super used to it. Instagram has always kind of been my domain, uh, but it's really cool to be able to break into uh, really a new form of self-expression almost in a way. Uh, and I thank you guys for being able to give me the opportunity to be able to do that. Um, and it's been uh, it's been really cool to see uh, how my videos have grown, uh, the channel has grown, all of that kind of stuff. It's been very fun. Also, if you guys have any requests for videos, you can also drop that in. Uh, I'm working right now on my monochrome long-term review. It's been about a year since I've had that now, so I've worked with it a long time and have a, a bunch of images. So really, it's kind of just compiling all the images and getting them in uh, into a timeline is the difficult part. Uh, also probably gonna do some stuff with the Q2. Um, this is actually, this video is shot on the Q2. Uh, I've been using that as my main video camera. Um, I have an SL2 um, sample video review also coming soon. Uh, but if you guys have any other questions, ideas, feel free to drop a comment. That wraps up this video. Uh, be sure to like and subscribe. And if you're already subscribed, hit the notification bell, of course. Uh, and until next time.